So I just feel right now like a computer <laughs> and I have the internet open and I have like 20 tabs open. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 84 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, October 20th. Yep, <laughs> 2020. So it is a nice hot October day here in Texas, of course. I think it was mm, 80 something today. Too hot, it's too hot, what the heck? It needs to be fall and ready for cold weather. We actually had a really cool September for Texas, and so this October being in the 80s and 90s and 70s and whatever, I'm not feeling it. It is, however, kind of chilly in the morning, so I have been wearing some knitwear. So yeah, let's just start there. So the past two days I've been wearing my like a cloud cardigan in the mornings. I really didn't need it this morning because it was like 70, but yesterday it was 50 degrees and I also wore a hat because now my morning car line duty has changed from being like me standing at the door where I can just greet kids and I can knit and I just gave them a pump of hand sanitizer to me actually being out where the cars are and the parents are and I have to take temperatures and I just can't knit anymore. Bummer, right? <laughs> but I did wear this hat the other day. This is one of my patterns. It is the, um, well, I knew what it was right before, the No Huddle hat. It is part of the Fall Means Football Collection. So if you are somebody who is doing the pigskin party, knitting this hat pattern will get you some extra points. Um, but it is intended to be knit in a single ply. So it's a great way to use up like extra single ply if you have like for this little this little section. Um, I'll link the pattern below so you can see the details. It's not a long hat. I'll put it on for you. It's a short hat, but you of course could just make it longer if you wanted to, but there you go. No huddle hat. And it looks really cute with a pom-pom, so um, I love this one. Of course, you can make it in team colors, but I made it in just like some fun colors that I really like. I don't remember the yarns off the top of my head. I believe this one is Malabrigo, and I'm not sure about the other one, but I will link the project as well so that you can go and check that out. Okay, that made me really want to make some more hats because I thought it was just so cute. I kind of like forgot that I had it. All right, no finished objects this week, so let's just get right into whips. I did a ton of knitting on Saturday. Saturday, I was just like, okay, I'm not doing any work. Well, that's not true. I think I did a little bit of work, but I was like, let's just get a lot of knitting done. I was out of the house a lot. And so I did a decent amount. So let's start out with my Weekender. This is my project for the fall garment make along. And I'm still not joined at the top, but I did do a few inches of knitting and I have just started in on the short rows here. That's why I'm like mid row because I can't really go to the end of the row right now. But this is the Weekend Light by Andrea Mowry. You really can't see much of it right now. It is gonna look like this on the right side when I'm done, which is gonna be so nice. So yeah, I am working my way through the short rows, then I'll do the ribbing, and then I'll finally be able to join everything and start on the sleeves. I'm using Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight in the colorway Jackrabbit Heather, and I'm still loving it. I'm just kinda slowly but surely working on it. The last month of the fall garment make along is starting tomorrow. And so I'm like, all right, <laughs> I have to at least finish one garment in these three months, right? It's been two. It's time to actually finish that up there. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have a new microphone today. It's the same brand, pretty much the same thing as my other one, except I went for the shorter size. It's either a meter or six meters. And I'm like, well, my other one is so long. I'll get the shorter one. Well, this one's really short, so I kind of have it clipped differently, but hopefully, I mean, it shouldn't, shouldn't really matter, but my other microphone was kind of doing funny things, like I would record voiceovers and it would start making this like <coughs> noise and it would do it sometimes, but not other times. So I'm like, all right, I'm just replacing it. So here we go, got a new microphone. So you probably won't hear any difference, but hopefully you won't hear anything bad. 
which would be great. <laughs> okay, my next whip is, oops, dinging it around, my October socks. This is what I got so much done on on Saturday, just taking it around with me. Oh, I knit on these, let me show you first. Here we go. See, look at all that progress. And if you're confused looking at this, don't worry, I'm making a tube and then I'm doing afterthought everything. I need to go back in and put some markers in and see like where I wanna stop because I don't think that this repeats. That was the big drama last week is trying to find a repeat and I don't think that it repeats. I don't think that it does. Cause I, I started to go, oh, look, it is repeating. It's got skinny, medium, big, skinny, medium, maybe big, but then what's happening up here? Why is it like big, 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 big? Like, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. So I'm just gonna have to go in and find spots where it kind of looks the same to make two sort of matching socks. That would be really nice if they could be sort of matching. Okay, so two things about this. I worked on this while I was getting my hair done on Saturday. It's been over a year since I got even a hair cut and it's been like, um, probably eight years since I've had any color in my hair. So you might not be able to tell because it is really subtle, but I did get some blonde in my hair. We're gonna start the journey to going blonder. So if you look at last week's hair versus this week's hair, you can maybe tell, but if you just are like, huh? It's okay, if you can't tell, I wanted it to be really subtle and gradual. We're gonna start going blonder because I need it. And I just got the teensiest little bit trimmed off, so my hair is still really long, but it's a lot healthier. Anyway, so I was sitting in the chair for like two hours and I knit almost the entire way through it. So I knit while she was trimming, I knit while they were putting the collar in my hair. Because they did just like a, a balayage or whatever it's called, I never had to like flip my head down or anything. I only stopped when I had to get my hair washed and styled. So that resulted in a ton of sock knitting. I did all of this pretty much on Saturday. I think actually all of it on Saturday. And then we went to a haunted house on Saturday night um, a haunted drive through sorry. And so I was knitting in the car and um, in my mother-in-law's car, she has those like funny blue, um, not, it's not funny, but she has like the ambiance lighting. And so it was on blue. And I noticed that when I held up this sock under the blue light, it made the green look like it was glow in the dark. I'm sorry, it's not actually glow in the dark, but it did look glow in the dark against that blue light. So that's two things I learned about my socks this week. The yarn, by the way, is, that's a piece of my hair, Brazen Stitchery in the colorway in Skein in the Membrane. And it is a variable stripe, which, um, I don't know. I guess I'm adjusting to, I'm trying my best. Okay, last project here. This is my slip, slip Stravaganza. So if you don't want any spoilers, look away. I have only made it through Clue one. Oh yeah, this is too short. I don't think this is, I don't think this mic's gonna work. I think I'm gonna send this one back and get the longer one. Okay, I've only made it through clue one. I haven't even done the bonus for clue one yet. So that's where we're at. Do you hear that toaster? Oh, my husband's gonna be coming through the door at any moment. So if you, if there's any abrupt cuts, that's what's happening. Okay, so Look away if you don't wanna see clue one, but if you've already gone past clue one, then there are no spoilers here. All right, ready? Dun, da, da, da. Okay, this is my slip stravaganza. I did a ton because last week I was right here where this little cake is. There we go. And so I have done a ton of knitting. Now I haven't gone back and done the next part yet, which I can only assume is to pick up stitches because this is all bound off. Um, and I haven't done that yet because it takes some time to sit and think and I only just finished this last night. Um, but the colors that I'm using are, actually I'm not gonna go through them. I will link my project though, but I'm using two from Suburban Stitcher, these two. I know this one's Quintanera and actually I remember. This one's Sugar. And then I'm using one from Log Do Long Dog Yarn, though I can't remember the color on that one, but I will link the project. So I know there's, I've, I guess I've kind of seen things. I haven't completely avoided spoilers, but I have not seen what Clue 2 looks like. I've barely seen what the Clue 1 bonus looks like, so I'm excited to do this. I don't know if I'll be able to do it tonight or not. I do have Knit Group, it's Tuesday night, um, but I'll probably work on my Weekender because it's simpler and I can actually talk and everything. 
The air conditioning just went off. I turned it off. What the heck? Supposed to stay off. It's just supposed to stay off. Anyway, there you go. I, I am really liking how these colors are turning out. I think they're kind of subtle, you know, not too in your face as far as stripes go. So I'm pleased with my color choices so far. You know, it's a mystery knit along, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, again, I am keeping these in my float tote, the large size, and that's making it really nice. I can take it around with me. Actually, I made this a little more portable than it probably is. I actually took it around like in public and like had it sitting in my lap. And yeah, I, I took it everywhere because I was determined to finish Clue 1 this weekend and I kind of made it. I guess that first part of Clue 1 was really my goal. Okay, I'm gonna be casting on something new here. I don't know exactly what yet. I meant to pull the yarn before we started, but then I forgot. Um, because I have a new make-along coming up, which I will tell you about in just a second. It's already been announced, so it's not it's not a spoiler. Um, but I think I'm gonna be making some hats um, for Wooly Wishes, and so I was kind of looking at my yarns. I don't know if I wanna use up maybe like a DK weight, because I don't use DK weight a lot, and that'll go really fast, or if I wanted to pull like a really fun color of fingering weight yarn. I don't know, but maybe next week I'll have a new project to show you. Actually, I definitely will. Maybe I'll have two. Who knows, who knows? Okay, we have lots of ask me questions this week. I'm only gonna do like three or four of them and then I have an update from last week's self-stripping question, but first I need a sip of water. All right, I'm all hydrated, so now let's do some questions. This one is from Miss B2220. It's too hard to make that into a number. Okay. Hi, Natalie. I love watching your videos. Thanks for massively opening up my knitting and crocheting world. I want to do the West Knits slip extravaganza, but I don't have the right length circular needle. Mine is 60 centimeters instead of 100 centimeters. I'm on a tight budget, so I wondered if I can get away with a shorter needle. Apart from it all being too tight, do you think it will affect the shawl? Thanks, Liz. Okay, so Liz, that's actually kind of hard to answer because I haven't gotten very far yet. I will tell you that I am I am knitting on a, um, what did you say? So I am actually working on a 24 inch needle, which I believe is the same as 60 centimeters. And so far it's fine. You know, the piece so far I've just shown you. So I, if you're coming back in and didn't want spoilers, I'm not gonna show you. But I don't, however, know what's coming up. And my guess is that at some point we're gonna have a lot of stitches on the needle and I will switch to a 32 inch, which I don't think is quite 100 centimeters. I don't know what that is. I think 100 centimeters is a 40 inch needle. Um, so I probably won't ever go up to a 40 inch needle. I like to knit on the shortest needle possible because then my stitches don't get overstretched and I can just like more easily move them along. Um, so I can't, I don't really know, like, I guess go as far as you can on that 40 centimeter, 60 centimeter um, needle. And then do you have another 60 centimeter needle? Because if you have two needles in the same size, then you can make that work. Um, but yeah, you're just gonna have to see, I really don't know, but I am going to guess that I'm gonna need to switch to a longer cord at some point when there are a lot of stitches in this shawl. Okay, the next question is from South Craft Gifts. Hey Natalie, I'm a knitter and crocheter, but I've recently been trying to start my own knit and crochet patterns. What tips do you have for a newbie in this area? And how do I get testers for my patterns? I'm also newer to Ravelry. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, so my biggest suggestion for people who are gonna start designing knit and crochet patterns is to test other people's patterns because that's gonna be the best way for you to see what the process is like. It's not just design the pattern and write it up and go. There's a lot more that is involved in that. I mean, basically knitting and crochet is a language that you need to communicate. There's a format for that. Like you might not even know how you want to format your patterns. 
So almost the design is like the easy part, it's everything else that comes after that. So I would test for a few different people. I know there are like groups and stuff, maybe even on Ravelry or Facebook where you can apply to be a tester. Um, you can also look on Instagram, just like hashtag like testers needed um, and, or pattern testers needed and start applying to test patterns. Um, that's gonna be just the best way. And it also has a double benefit because it builds your community and kind of your, um, status isn't the right word, um, street credit, <laughs> I don't know. It kind of just like builds your rapport with the community and letting like others know that you like are very serious about knitting and crochet, you can meet deadlines and, and all of that. So I would get started there. That's how I started and I got to see like different designers formats for their patterns and I got to implement some of those things in my own patterns. Do I want columns? Do I not want columns? Like, do I want a whole cover page with a photo? Like, what do I actually want on my pattern? And that really helped me to develop things. As far as getting testers for your patterns, it's just hard at first. Um, you know, put it, put it out there, put it in your stories, put it on your feed. Um, you can even like have people like anticipate it. You can like share the design and say, I'm going to be looking for testers soon. Um, and there's one other thing. Oh, make sure you to use like a hashtag, like testers needed and pattern testers needed because some people might be looking through those hashtags to see who needs help. Um, you could also go to those groups. I don't know any specifically. I haven't actually used a group, but there are groups where people are just like readily available to test patterns. And so you can do that. Um, probably expect only a couple people to test your first few patterns, but as you gain more like, um, I'm losing all the words today. As like more people find out about you, it will be easier and easier for you to get pattern testers and hopefully you'll give everyone a good experience and they want to come back and test for you again. It can be fun, kind of like a knit along. Um, as far as Ravelry goes, it's just practice. Um, Ravelry is not the most user friendly uh, as a user and as a pattern like designer, it, there's just some things that you have to just get in there and figure out and take the time to do it. Um, there, as far as I know, there's not like a lot of resources um, for how to do some of the things on Ravelry, that would be really nice. Maybe there are, and I just haven't like looked for them properly, um, but there are forums that you can go into for designers and like ask questions and stuff, so that could be very helpful. All right, one more today, um, one more new question that I'm gonna loop back around to one of the questions we had last week. Okay, uh, this is from Emily Presley. Hi Natalie, I'm going to take the plunge and knit my first sweater. Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. It's kind of a rite of passage, right? Do you have any tips for a first time sweater knitter? P.S. I love both of your channels between cleaning and organizing and knitting and crochet. I feel like I found my internet BFF. Thanks for your help, Emily. Oh, Emily, I love that. I think I've seen your name um, maybe on Instagram or YouTube before. So thanks for coming back and thank you for asking this question. Okay, so the Flax Light is a great sweater to start out with. As far as being like a new sweater knitter, I wrote down some things when I was planning, so I want to make sure that I say them. Okay, so things that I wish I knew when I knit my first sweater is to first choose the right size. <laughs> and so you can do this by taking lots of measurements of your body. So not just bust measurements, because guess what? We're not all the same. If we have the same bust measurement, that doesn't mean our hip measurement is going to fit the pattern. So take lots of measurements. You know, you can measure like your highest bust, which is right under your armpits, your full bust, your waist, and your hips. That's four measurements for you right there just to start. Um, you also might want to measure or at least look at um, the schematic and see how long from the armpit to the bottom of the sweater um, that it wants you to knit. Usually it's around like 15, 16, 17 inches. And then go find a sweater in your closet that you love the fit of and the length of and measure that from the armpit down and see is it 15, 15 and a half, 16, like what is it? And you can adjust your pattern accordingly because adding length to a pattern, I'm not saying like first time sweater, you need to make a lot of changes, but like if you're knitting a sweater and it says 
14 inches and you're really tall and you need 16 inches, it's so easy to just knit two more inches and get the length that you need. Um, and then when choosing a size, you know, choose for your bust if it's top down, choose for your hips if it's bottom up, and then eventually like, like maybe this sweater won't be perfect because it'll be like kind of too big or too small, but like eventually you'll be able to make adjustments in between by increasing or decreasing to the next size that you need. Um, so yeah, those are just some things. Uh, swatch for sure and wash and block your swatch. If the sweater is knit in the round, knit the swatch in the round. I have a video tutorial on how to do this quickly. Um, if it's flat, knit it flat. Uh, oh, and the last thing is just to try it on often. So make sure you have either some try it on tubing or just some, well, yarn is really hard because if you take all your stitches off onto yarn, you have to put them all back on. It's like an hour process and that's too much. If you have interchangeable needles, you can use the like flat little stoppers and put those on there and then try things on. So try it on often. Okay, first swatch, measure, to choose the right size and try it on often and you will have the best experience. And honestly, it's probably not gonna be perfect the first time, that's okay. Um, but with those precautions, <laughs> should we call them that, that should really help a lot. Okay, last week there was a question about self-striping yarn and how to get rid of the jog and self-striping yarn. And I showed you guys my self-striping sock and how it didn't really have a jog. Um, and let me explain what that means first, just in case you're not sure. So when you're knitting stripes in the round, typically when you're like, let's just say you're doing blue and white, you know, you have a white ball of yarn, you have a blue ball of yarn. You knit around a white, you knit around a blue. And at the beginning of the round where you're changing those colors, there's a jog, basically like a step up because all knitting is in a spiral, not it's not like where it comes around and like exactly meets its body. <laughs> the first and last stitch don't meet up, they jog like this. Um, in self-striping yarn, you don't always notice it because between colors, there's typically a transition. So like right here, where it goes from orange to black, it's like orange, gray, white, gray, then black. So you don't really notice it that much. And it happens in random places, not just at the beginning of the round. Um, so I don't really notice it. The person that asked the question though had a self-striping yarn where it was like very abrupt. Like maybe it was a red stripe and one stitch was red and immediately the next stitch was blue, like fully saturated. So it was very obvious in the difference. Now, if you go on the Ravelry group to the Ask Me thread, Several people were helping out, but there's a post in particular from Vanilla Knits. Thank you, Vanilla Knits. And they uh, linked a resource that might be helpful um, for getting rid of that jog. So if that was a question that you were like, I've had that issue before, head to the Ravelry group. That resource is there. Again, the post is from Vanilla Knits responding to that question. Okay. That's all the questions, and now we have a lot of news, so let me take another sip of water before we get started on that. There are so many fun things coming up in the Love and Stitches world. There is a new make-along that I just announced this week. There's a whole video on it with an interview with an organization called Wooly Wishes, but I'll tell you briefly about it here. So Wooly Wishes is an organization that accepts knit, crochet, and hand-sewn items, and they send them over to Turkey to a Syrian refugee camp um, for basically for the families, but mostly for the children there to have something very comforting, you know, also keep them warm. Um, and it's just a really amazing organization. It is, it was started by um, a high school student, which I think is so impressive. And the entire organization is made up of students, college and high school as well. So it's really cool. Go watch the interview. I interviewed the um, founder and also their events coordinator. And it was really, really fun. In that video, I also talk about the make-along details, so let me tell you those quickly too. So we're starting right now. We started on October 20th, but you know you can work on it at any time. And we're ending on November 15th because November 15th is their next ship date to the refugee camp. Um, so as long as you have your stuff mailed out by the November 15th, you should be good. Um, but for the purposes of the make-along, we're ending on November 15th because I have some prizes. Um, so yeah, so you can make anything um, 
for children that you want like a hat, like basically accessories, hat or sweater, socks, booties, you can knit or crochet, you can use any yarn that you prefer. Um, I think I'm probably gonna dive into, like I said earlier, I need to start a new project, maybe my DK or maybe some fingering weight and make a hat. I have a bunch of patterns linked in the Wooly Wishes Make Along um, like resource page. I also have a thread on Ravelry if you wanna go over there and chat and ask questions. Um, but a bunch of different free patterns that, that come in children's sizes um, for you, but you can do anything you want as well. If you've already made some stuff and you're like, you've just been waiting for an organization to donate it to, you can also send to Wooly Wishes. So I'll have all the stuff, like you'll see all the stuff for the fall garment make along, you'll see everything for the Wooly Wishes make along, all in the description box. And then there's also like different places you can go to get more information, Ravelry and Google Docs, which will be linked. Um, but yeah, so that's new this week, October 20th to November 15th. And all of the prizes are at the end of that video as well. We've got 11 prizes, and I think I have two more that I'm gonna be adding here in the next couple days. So it's gonna be really, really good. And all you do to win a prize is you donate something. There was a, there's a shipment form. You'll put that you're doing it as part of the make along and there you go. You can fill out the shipment form as soon as you finish something. You don't have to wait until you ship it because I kind of want to be keeping track. Maybe like every Friday I'll check in and see how many hats we have and sweaters and just see how it's going. So I can encourage you guys. Oh, and our goal is 250 items. So between now and November 15th, my goal is that we will have donated 250 items to Wooly Wishes. There are over 5,000 people, almost six here on YouTube and tons on Instagram as well. So, you know, it doesn't even have to be all of us. If it was all of us, can you imagine? We would like smash their goal. They have a goal of a thousand and they're at around 500 right now. So I was like, we can get them to 750. We can get them there. So um, help us with that goal. I'm gonna be knitting at least one thing. Um, if you can spare some time and some yarn to get that done before November 15th, that would be really, really amazing. And make sure to go and follow Wooly Wishes so that you can keep up with them. If now is not a good time and you want to donate later, you can keep up with them that way. Okay. Also, at the same time, the fall garment make along is still going on. We are in the last month. So when I'm recording this, tomorrow's the last day, but when you're watching this, it will have happened in the past. <laughs> um, but we're in the last month of the fall garment make along the October, November month. So starting on October 21st and ending November 20th. Um, so there's new prizes. I just put out a new IGTV video with all of the October, November prizes. So go check that out. And if you are participating in the September, October, month-long segment make sure to check Ravelry and Instagram to see if you won a prize I know there was eight I think eight prizes from the last month and there's seven prizes for this next month and they're awesome so make sure to go check that out so two make-alongs going on one is for Wooly Wishes to donate to Syrian refugees and one is just for you know for fun for you make a garment for yourself or somebody in your family and it's just like a whip make along so two things going on two opportunities to win prizes and next week i have another make along that i'm announcing and if you're like whoa three is too many at one time natalie don't worry this third make along is actually not going to start until these other two are over or almost over um, i can't remember the exact start date that we set but it is definitely after the woolly wishes one and coming in right at the end of the fall garment make along and it's completely different um, we do have to announce it though next week in order just because you'll see you'll see next week so make sure you have your YouTube notifications on so that you know when that video is coming make sure you're following me on Instagram because you're not going to want to miss this announcement I'm very very excited about it um, yeah I've been planning it for a little while so so excited for next week okay life so I just feel right now like a computer and I have the internet open and I have like 20 tabs open <laughs> that's how I feel right now um, just a lot of different things going on all very good all very exciting work is busy nitty natty is busy um, this and that is busy it's just a busy well I don't like the word busy is hard because 
I feel like we choose to be busy. I know I do, I like being busy. Um, but I have a lot on my plate, a lot of tabs open, and they're all very exciting, and I'm trying my best to give them equal energy. And so just, you know, finding the balance and all of that is a challenge for sure. But I have, I have a goal and I am like on fire for it. And so that's what's going on here in my life. Other than that, not too much going on. We had the excitement a couple weekends ago going out of town. I would really like to go out of town again. <laughs> we have started going back to um, SMU football games. We've, you know, we've done a little, you know, fun things here and there, kind of, you know, snippets of what life used to be like, which is good. Um, I guess I know I would be even busier Ugh, hate that word, even busier if I also had social events going on. So that's one thing to be grateful for is I can really pursue my goals right now without all of the other stuff going on. Um, I have a question for you. What is your favorite Halloween movie? Haven't watched any Halloween movies yet this year. Well, we kind of watched Hocus Pocus, but I wasn't really paying attention because I didn't really want to watch it yet. I wasn't ready. This was too early for me. I think it was in September and I wasn't ready. Um, so I haven't really like gotten into the Halloween spirit as far as movies yet, and I'm ready to because now it's the 20th, only 11 days until Halloween, so I'm ready to get into that spirit. It needs to get cold outside. That would really help a lot. So let me know what your favorite one is. Bringing me joy this week is just all of the make-alongs. I'm really excited to um, have partnered with Wooly Wishes and put together a make-along that is doing some good. Um, you know, I'm all about making for yourself, for sure, but I'm excited to be doing something that has a bigger purpose and can reach other people. So, very excited about that. All right, did we cover everything? That was nice and quick this week. What time is it? Oh, it's almost time for me to go knit with my friends, but first, hey, Toaster, you wanna take a walk? Oh my gosh, you guys, I should've recorded that. He's so adorable. All right, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week with a new make-along announcement. Bye!